Over the course of 2023, we've tried to bring you a little bit of adventure, a little bit of fun, a little bit of knowledge, and perhaps we have put a hurting on some of your bank accounts. And as we rank the best and worst of 2023, we figure it's the holidays. Let's hang out. Right, so we're going to go grab a drink and we'll see you in a couple minutes. And I just hope that you'll stand by me. When the night has come And the land is dark And the moon is the only light we'll see Welcome back to the show, everyone. So one of the perks of doing a year in top 10 and highlighting the worst products of the year list is um, we don't need to shoot any guns today. Not at all. Um, that's fantastic. Oh. You know what the opportunity that creates? We get some booze. Cheers, Jake. That is correct, Thanks my Thanks to friends. a good year, buddy. Um, so this video will be a little bit different, a little bit more leisurely. We're just yeah. going to kind of have a drink, have some food. We're just gonna get, just dine with us, right? Bring the whole family into the living room. Yeah, pour the whole family a drink. Yeah, kids included. Uh, maybe even syndicate booze if you're lucky enough to have one of those bad boys. Right. Um, yeah. So, like I said, we're gonna cover our year in top ten and um, highlight a few of the worst things of the year <laughs> as well. Do and that a little disclaimer the too is it's been featured on the channel this year. Yes. Right? That needs to be a distinction. Not necessarily manufactured. It wasn't a release. Maybe some of them might have been. I think that was confusing in the past. Yes. Uh, this is stuff that's been featured. So even if it's a gun from 1911, see what I did there? I did. Nicely done. Featured on the channel. So. Yeah. Ooh, tasty. Good old fashioned. Good old fashioned. Uh, good uh, big thing. Uh, thanks, actually, to the bar um, Durango in and, and Tropicana yep. um, for having us in and they make a, a mean old fashioned here. They're good friends with our buddy Roger at QVO who set this up for us. So thank you guys to the bar. Thank you to Roger. Thank you to everyone here. Very Devin, much. the nice bartender. Absolutely. So let's get into it. So even though this is a different video and we're having a drink here. Indeed we are. I'm still wearing a certain belt that I love to wear, whether it's at the range <coughs> or at a bar. That's do you correct. know what belt that is? I do, because it's on my hips as well. That oh, would really? be from Segar Gear. Segar yeah. Gear. That's correct. They make the inner light belt, which we're wearing. Uh -huh. You know, it's my EDC belt. It's also the belt, because it has Velcro, that stacks underneath my battle belt. Yep. Good guys over there at Segar. What's the discount code, Jake? 1911 Syndicate. How much does it save you? Saves you 10% off. There we go. That's what we call good deal, my friend. Very yep. good deal. Check them out. Um, so check them out. Thanks to them. So to kick off the list, we're going to go in order as like 
10 being, you know, number 10 on the list, number one is the number one greatest thing, right? Yep. This is something we actually kind of talked about, uh, maybe even debated a little bit, having it on the channel, Cobalt Kinetics. Sure. Because I now work for Cobalt. At the time of the review though, I did not work for Cobalt. Right. Um, Cobalt Kinetics. So uh, we had them on the channel earlier this year. We'll obviously cut in some footage to that. I believe there's some measurable enhancements. Come on over, man. Come on in. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, Got yeah. some appetizers coming up. There we go. What, uh, what is it? Oh, fried mozzarella bites. Yeah. Lovely. Buffalo, Buffalo chicken. chicken dip. Thank you, sir. And then some Appreciate nachos you. Yeah. or something. Okay. Lovely. There we go. So, so Cobalt guys. Kinetics. I believe they have some measurable enhancements that are, like I said, measurable. Okay. Whether it's the monolithic upper, mm -hmm. the license through Viltor proprietary cobalt kinetics buffer system. Right. And a couple other features that they have. Yeah. Not only that, I believe they're good people. And as well as having worked in the gun industry and the different jobs that I've had, one of the things was cobalt was at several events and I've yet to see one fail before working for them and after working sure. for them. So again, you guys might say there's a little bias there, but again, we reviewed that gun or I reviewed that gun before working for cobalt. I now work for cobalt, but for me, it's been my favorite AR out of this year. It mm -hmm. had to make the list for me. Yep. So Cobalt Kinetics, number awesome. 10. Love it. Mm. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, mm. Number nine, we got T-Sauce, Jake. Okay, so num that. number nine spot. Um, I battled with this a little bit, if I can be honest with you. T-Sauce 1911. <laughs> you know, you're just, no one's watching this top 10 list and going, hang on, hang on. You're telling me you got a, 1911 with a street value of like 400 bucks. Yeah, it's on the top 10 list. It's at the number nine spot. Um, and for a channel that does primarily kind of Gucci stuff, this yeah, is yeah, a little shocking. Yeah, I, I'm almost, I, I don't know if I'm like thrilled right now. I feel like a, a combination of dirty, thrilled, honest, a, a little bit of everything, mixed emotions, right? <laughs> okay. And because um, the truth is you just go, look, you got to judge something by what it is. If I were to judge the T-Sauce by the standards of, um, you know, Nighthawk or something like that, you go, well, no, it's that's terrible. Unfair. But that's not what it is. And it's not trying to be that. It's trying to be a budget pistol. And it does exceedingly well at that. What's up, guys? I guess I'll put the mic on. You know why I'm joining right now. Because of food? Because of food, but also because the T-Sauce is the 1911 that's on the list that I can afford. Oh yeah. So everyone, we're now joined by our uh, videographer, um, Crispy, uh, Crispy Visuals, um, who m most of you don't see that often. But we figured, hey, it's a family-style dinner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's more of a Christmas dinner theme. So would anyway. you consider us family at this point? When we first started filming together, I said going to work was like hanging out with my fun uncle. Mm. But now there's jokes around that you guys are actually my dads. So mm. yeah, I'd say it's oh. family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was tough to not have on the list. When something works that well and is that price, again, you just go like, what, did it, what is it that I'm supposed to fault here? It works really good. It's really inexpensive. It's forged components, ambi safety, good trigger. Like, you go, how the hell can I not put that on the list? I mean, it's literally a $400, $1911. Everyone got mad at me because in the title, I'm like, can a $580, 1911 be good? They're like, bro, you're so out of date. They're like sub 400 street price. Like, I'm not tracking the streets every day, everyone, okay? <laughs> everyone fucking relax. Right. But I'm just like, but to their point, I can't find much default there. Right. And as a fan of the channel, as well as being on the channel, it is nice to see the snobby 1911, 2011 guru, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. Like, dude, I, I can't believe how many times you called me throughout there. review. like, dude, there, I can't find something, anything wrong with this. It shoots better than it should shoot. Right. So anyway, yeah, that's the number well, nine spot. And the T-Sauce, it, it, it's definitely good enough that it will serve its purpose where someone like myself who hasn't quite transitioned into the 1911, that will help serve its purpose for that, right? Like starting out with the T-Sauce. It's a gateway drug. Me get into the higher in 1911s that right. are often mm -hmm. on the channel. So. Yeah. Next up, we got that Steyr SSG M1. Yeah. Now, self-admittedly, and as some people like to point out in the comments, we don't know long range stuff. Never pretend Even though to be. we fully admit we don't know long range stuff and we'll continue to admit that. For sure. Because we're self-aware, if you will. Yep. Right? The Steyr. So when we were making this list, I said, dude, we gotta have a bolt gun on there. It'd be the first time that it's ever been on the channel. We had Joe out. It's gotta be on there. On top of, I really, really like the Steyr for a couple of reasons. 
obviously the AI is the easy choice, right? Everyone loves Accuracy International. Yeah, it's historic. It's historic as well as it's fielded and a lot of people use them, civilian and military. That was too much of an easy choice, oh. right? I dig the concept of the switch barrel. Mm -hmm. And then after shooting the Steyr with Joe, being able to shoot and train with 308, mm -hmm. thousands of rounds without burning out the barrel, and then switch to with the same scope, the same setup on everything to those big bore calibers, it's kind of a no-brainer if you want to get into the precision stuff. On That's top cool. of, cool gun. one thing I really liked about it is the safety controls are very like an AR, and then the thumb safety as well adds to that extra layer of safety. So, Steyr SSG M1, in my opinion, is the bolt gun I'd probably go with, if I could afford it. Yeah, and right. if you could find one, because there's and not many in the country. One. Right, that also adds to getting on this list, it's a little more rare than an AI, yeah. so. Well, did I shoot the Steyr or did I shoot the AI when we were shooting at 800? I think you shot both. Both of them. Uh -huh. yeah, I know there was one where I took 10 rounds and I hit four out of 10 first uh -huh. time shooting long range at 880. That could have been the Steyr or it could have been the AI. Was it suppressed? I don't I don't recall. Okay. If it's not the Steyr, I'll just cut this from the video. But I if it was, was, it was, it was a good time. So. The reason why is I was bringing that up as a segue, it also suppresses very well. Like that can on that gun sounded great that day. So good. gun ran great, can ran great. Steyr SSG M1. Okay, number seven spot. I'm gonna tell you guys, this this is tricky. Um, pretty much everything from here on out really fell into the love category. And some of Chris's picks are even things that I was primarily reviewing. And you go, he's got kind of sticky because any of this stuff could have been at the number one spot is, is, sure. is the truth. But mm -hmm. at the number seven spot, I've got the Cabot Inversion. Now, you've never actually shot that. Insurrection, it, sir. Insurrection. What did I say? Inversion. 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 That is another awesome. Cabot. We're Very talking cool. the insurrection yes. here. Um, so the cabin insurrection, you unfortunately didn't even get to shoot it. Correct. Because um, you're out of town that month. But um, look, man, it's a great gun. Really nice design. Very classy. It shot great. It was totally reliable. I like the steel grip module, which most 2011s are aluminum grips. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, here oh, already yeah, brought we've us got some. some. Oh. Yeah, Sorry. I thought you were wondering if you could come in. We shouted you out too if you want to say hi to the camera. So, Devin. <laughs> oh, we're doing we're great. We're good right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so, so yeah. much. Just cruising along. No, you guys are great. Thank you. So, anyway, steel grip module um, versus aluminum adds some weight, soaks up some recoil. I'm a fan of it. Um, it's just a good gun. I, I, I mean, Cabot going into the double stack world is that's a win. That's a win for the 1911 community. Um, just go solid gun, man. Yeah. And the video was, uh, you know, we, we had some dicey mode, just very brief, but I mean, behind the scenes, we were trying to film the open to that on, on these crazy sand dunes that are, that are out this direction. And, um, it got dicey that day, guys. It was the first time I think ever that we've kind of fled the scene of set and said, we gotta, we gotta get the hell out of here right now. Can I tell a little bit of the backstory? Yeah, knock yourself So we went, we went to the Little Sahara, which is one of the, the world's, like Utah's biggest riding areas for dirt bikes and razors and all okay. of that, right? And so this place is a fucking zoo. Uh -huh. It's crazy, there are so many cars. And so Jake went on a Tuesday at like 1 p.m. He's like, oh yeah, like there's, no there's, there. there's this giant mountain. He was expecting us and guys, like I'll put on some footage that I just found on YouTube right now. People are hitting these razors at 100 miles per hour climbing the Little Sahara. Oh, no, no, no. They're, Have you they're ever going seen straight anything vertical. like this? Yeah. They, they, like dunes, like dunes. riding dunes. So oh, it's like so terrifying. We're in the, the midst of the most busy part of the whole area and we took the Forerunner and the Tundra. <laughs> on what day was it? On a Saturday. But what else was going on that day? What was it? An eclipse. Oh yeah, an eclipse. Um, it was fucking And crazy. we were in the eclipse path, so the amount of people that were in Utah was like, yeah. dude, it was nuts. Oh. Well, and and the, the vehicles that are out there, they're there to rip. They're there to jump, they're, you know? So to, to lollygag in a fucking Tundra and a Forerunner, we're completely out of place. We're in their turf right now. And so we go over a couple dunes and we're literally, our tires are like covered in sand, right? And so then, we could tell that these like a group of like ten razors are toying with us, and it was like like the great lights around the ship. They're yeah, just we're sitting with us, yeah. And like less like than two crazy. feet from my forerunner, they're jumping razors at like sixty miles per hour, and it yeah. it was clearly like oh fuck you guys, yeah. You know because we're on their these guys at it. Oh yeah, yeah. 
what are you doing here, boy? Yeah. That kind of thing. You're like, bro, Whoa, like, right. like, chill. Right. Like, it was dicey, bro. It was. It was dicey. But I was will not say fun. that there was a silver lining at the end of that afternoon, and it was <clears> definitely <throat> some of the most fun filming that I've had. I it was fucking incredible. loved the Oh, you haven't seen the footage? Yet. I haven't seen yeah, any yeah. Of it. As of this, Chris hasn't seen the footage. Oh. It's going to be cool, dude. Okay. It, it's going to be very, cool. very cool. It's going to be sick. Um, so anyway, that's number seven. Moving on. Number six. Again, you reviewed this gun. But yes. I did yeah. like it very much. Mm -hmm. We got the Type A EG11. Mm -hmm. Our boys from Type A have been on the channel five, six times now. Yeah, something like that. But this is their first foray, if you will, into the pistol market. Much like right. Gavit. And, well, not exactly, but sure. Yeah, I get where they're you're They're a rifle company yeah, now. Yeah. They're going pistols, right? With the 2011. Um, we had known about this project for quite some time. You had told me some details, and I know you're excited about it. And then to have it on the channel and then to shoot it, is a different thing. Mm -hmm. We were both a little skeptical or nervous because mm -hmm. we like those guys, right? Um, at the same time, if something is not performing well, hey, you gotta be honest. You know, we gotta be honest. Um, due to presentation, fit and finish, the package that it comes with as far as Armor X300. Yeah, really nice. The whole package together at that price point, which kind of is in between that staccato, yeah, yeah. kind of higher end Nighthawk Infinity. Yeah, it's a tweener. There's really only two that fit in that category. Yep. The Vanta 9, which we had on the channel, right? And then the EG. Um, but due to that, it fits in a category here of, hey, I've, I kind of want something different than a staccato that everyone else has, but I'm not really quite ready to jump into the Nighthawk. Mm -hmm. So what do I got? Yeah. Type A EG11. You get your armor, you get your light with it, get a good holster, ready to rock. Fit and finish is awesome. Aesthetically, it looks great. Mm -hmm. the features are great. The Cerakote and finish look awesome. Really nice. Yeah. I think uh, that had to make the list this year because of that price point and all those features. And for so. me, uh, you know, another thing working in its favor is just surprising. You know, again, going back to the, hey, a rifle company with no background, and especially in a pistol as compl complex as the 1911 platform like mm -hmm. to come out swinging and it's good hey I, I, I mean good job yeah good job like i the, need a 2011 yeah. and i've had a staccato i'm kind of ready to go up when yeah. i when i have the cash to uh -huh. that next level i think type a is there out or now nah, type a is route yeah. well if i had to pick a number one for a pistol based off of pure aesthetics it it's probably the type A man. Like the cohesiveness and geometric of the lower and the upper, the slide and the frame. I think that pistol is just fucking gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful. Right on. Cool. On to the next one, Jake. Guys, if you're looking for any ways to support the channel so that we can pay for this dinner, because right now we're just gonna have to get, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna get, trip crispy and doo -doo. Yeah, yeah, we're right gonna throw now. water in someone's face and just I'm bolt the fastest, out of here. Bro. Um on a skateboard, sure. Um so anyway, if you're looking for ways to support the channel. 1911syndicate.com for a real estate business. We're, we're really freaking good at what we do most of the time. Sometimes, you know, we do our best. But um, go to the website, check it out. Let us know if you have any real estate help. We've got the Patreon. Um, it's a great way to support us, get some behind the scenes content, giveaways, early access to syndicate whiskey, watches, all that kind of stuff. So check that out. We got a link below. Appreciate the support. What would you do if I bought a house with another realtor and I live 30 minutes from here? Honestly, we don't want your business. So. Do you know how fired you are? <laughs> like, with vicious. Vicious. Like, I'm vicious in the firing process He's at that point. He's fucking out of here. Even oh, yeah. when you get fired from here, you better use this for real estate. There you go. Even right, when, not if. When. Oh, shit. Jake, you got number five, brother. Okay. Number five. What do we got at number five? Man, this really got tough. Um, so I've got the Nighthawk BDS-9 at my number five spot. I know. Um, I, I really like that gun. I really, really like that gun. Aesthetically, I find it to be very pleasing. Um, it worked great. I, I've never had a malfunction on that gun. Mm -hmm. um, I had one and it was a... a ammo related. Yeah, it was, a, it was ammo or mag, one of the two. But, um, you know, I've got a pretty decent round count on that gun and, and I've had no issues with it. Guesstimate, where do you think you're at? 3K, yeah, 4K? Yeah, no, uh, truthfully, because the, the reality is, is this. Because we... You review your product, and then immediately after that, new stuff's coming in that you're rolling into the next cycle. You never rack up, or at least for me, it's like I never really rack up any more five, 10,000 round count guns. Cause it's like, no, 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 next month, there's like a handful more things to, to go shoot. So you yeah. just go, I, I mean, when am I gonna shoot the BDS? I don't know. Like, so look, I love the gun, a couple thousand rounds, but no issues. 
great gun. I mean, Nighthawk, obviously a lot of heritage to that, um, yeah. which at the end of the day, I mean, the gun's either good or it's not. It doesn't matter. The heritage, heritage yeah. but um, it's just a damn good gun. You know, Acro does well on it. It's, huh. just, it's just one of those guns that like, sometimes you just connect and you go, I like this gun. Yeah. I like this gun, you know? Yeah. yeah. I got a little tied to it because I know the guy that worked with them on that project, Matt. So okay. there you go. Oh. And for me, if you took intros and shooting footage, those are two independent things, right? There's intros that can get elaborate with voiceover editing. It's a whole thing, but from pure shooting footage, when I did that track on the, the it's one dot, of my favorite things we've ever dot, done. Yeah. I don't know, man. That's some of the coolest footage we have on the channel, and there's a reason that I used it in every Top Gear opening. That was that was a really cool. Yeah. Thing. If you guys go back and you look at the BDS9 intro. There's a, there's a shot where I draw and I shoot, and the whole time the camera's tracking with and, and the can here we go, I'm doing this shit again. Right to your face. Um, Good looking. You know, the, the, <laughs> I the, missed the, it. The, the camera's tracking the whole time, and it's just really cool. And I, I messaged you at that point, I was like, dude, I don't know what the hell you did there, but that is really cool. Was, so let's do more of that. Out. So next up, Dick, we got the Galil Ace 22. Again, a gun that you reviewed, right? Um, seems like Jake's reviewing way too many of the the, the awesome picks. guns. Yeah, but right? we need to change that this next year. <laughs> Anyways, um, you know, when you guys said it's like an AKS platform, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, cool. I've heard this before. You know, whatever. I'm not really too into AKs. Right. After shooting Bruisers, Joe Dawson, and yours, dude, I'm really on board with that gun. I think, one, the magazines and how available they are, that right there sold me almost right out the gate. I'm like, you're telling and me. Inexpensive, too. Yeah. I was gonna get to that. Oh. Inexpensive mags that you can stack a ton of for the apocalypse. On that same token, it's an apocalypse AK style gun. I can shoot surplus steel case ammo through it, even sure. though five five six, right? Usually I shoot brass, but sure. if we can buy that. Aesthetically, once you do the uh, plastic delete kit, pleasing the aftermarket support that is there, the history behind it. Mm -hmm. It's just a great little AK-ish AR style gun that I want to get on board with. Yeah. So I need to reach out to them and figure that out because I'd love to kit one out and start running it. Mm -hmm. But I think, I mean, it checks all the boxes for like an AK platform, but AR. It does. So. It does. Manual arm's fantastic. Last mm -hmm. round hold open. Ran the safety, the safety's fantastic. John adjustable piston so you can suppress it. You just go, look, man. Checks Damn a lot of boxes. Gun. Giant fan. On Giant all fan accounts, it's extremely reliable too. Oh Did yeah. Did you like that gun? Dude, I think it's so good looking. Yeah. I think it's awesome. I, uh, Largely for the rattle can, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that whole setup from the accessories, the way it's kitted out, it's definitely very cool. Agreed. Right. Um, on see. to number three, Jake. Yep. What is your number one Chris moment from 2023? Whether it's a phrase or something that happened, what's your number one Chris moment? Jeez. The T sauce video. <laughs> Thank you. The montage <laughs> ends with this shot of Chris walking through. I've wanted to ask you this for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> The T sauce montage mm -hmm. about Ashley ends, and I'm shooting, and you walk through the background, and I swear you're walking, and you look down, and you're like, <laughs> you shake your head, and I can't tell if I'm sitting, my seat because you're out of focus. I swear you look down, and you're like, God, <laughs> like you're just irritated. Thank you, appreciate it. <clears throat> Thank you, man. So there's no indication of why I might be irritated. I swear you walk through the background, and you just shake your head in disappointment at me. What? When we were doing a round of revisions on that, Jake made it clear. He's like, there's a shot where Chris walks through the background, which usually there's never anything in the background, no trucks, no people. He's like, there's a shot where Chris walks in the background. Leave that in. Oh, I know exactly why. He was why. adamant about I it. I know what you're talking about. It's because I realized I walked through the shot. I looked up and saw you move, and I was like, God damn it. It's like, yeah. I, no. I failed Papa Jake. I know I I'm probably up. like 30 yards in the background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about. Right. When I saw that review, I was like, fuck. That's funny. Well, he told me to leave it in. He's like, that's fucking awesome. I was like, yeah, leave no, that in. It's fine. I, I was shaking my head because I was waiting for Jake to cut my pay. Oh, that's pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, which is basically zero. Which already. I didn't get paid anyway. So. <laughs> you're right. All right, at the number three spot, this really was tricky this year. I gotta admit, some uh, other years have been easier because there was real standout stars. And this year I was like, man, I really liked a lot of stuff. And I didn't actually dislike a whole lot of stuff. So the number three spot, um, mostly because again, it was just a toss up and eventually I was like, ah, screw it, man. I'll just change it up from 2011s and put something in. Um, Sig Spear LT. Mm -hmm. Sig Spear LT for me. Um, you know, I bought that gun, and mm -hmm. you always take things a little bit more seriously when you, you buy a product just because you're like, all right, well, you know, 
<laughs> Irish, I'm putting up. Yeah, Irish Panthers, money's on the line here, you know? Um, and so... <laughs> Irish Panthers. <laughs> Yeah. What are you talking about? No, I just, I get a kick out of it. You once, <laughs> son, did you see the speed at which you ever notice no one you? flinches when he does that? Yes, because he does it all the time. Yeah. Literally let us fell out of his it. burger because he flinched so hard there. Relax there, <laughs> Papa Jake. So the Spear LT, um, really cool gun. Look, again, haven't had a malfunction. One's cool. Looks great. Aesthetically, one of the best looking yep. guns, period. Um, Again, sometimes you're just like, I don't know, man. I don't even know what to tell you. This is a damn good gun. It's fully ambidextrous. Like, sure, it's not cheap, but did you think it was going to be cheap? Like, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Mm -hmm. Great gun. Bad. And people, and also, I'll just note on a timeline perspective, the right, barrel after, thing? right after yep. that we filmed the damn thing. Right after we Two filmed days. it. Yeah. Two days. And people started saying, oh, the barrel shifts in the handguard. It doesn't return to its, you know, zero point or whatever. And I was like... And people were asking if that happened with mine and why didn't we include that. One, we didn't include it because that wasn't a report out. Two, I haven't dropped my gun or tried to bend my barrel to discover if this is a defect. Am I planning on doing that? Not really. Why would I try to harm my gun? I don't know. Um, I don't often grab the barrel and, you know, do this to it. Yeah, you do that right in Crispy's face. It's a reference for you because you get this motion often. Yeah, it's 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 in relation to recoil. Okay? Oh, it's that motion, not this motion. Yeah, well, you know. Whose table am I sitting at? Well, your bosses. <laughs> <laughs> and your gay uncle, apparently. <laughs> your employers. Um, so Spear LT, that's coming in at my number three spot. Well, for me, cool. Spear LT was a really special film day, too, because first of all, we film there a lot, but I fucking love working at those ruins. Like, oh, you do? It, it gives me like a lot to work off of, and it just works, right? Mm -hmm. But we also were able to film at night and at sunset, which just made like the footage. There was the three cycles of mm -hmm. the different lighting, and mm -hmm. that was a really good montage to film. I will me. say I'll give Jake some credit here on the camera. You know, your idea with that when you snap and yeah. it changes, mm -hmm. I gotta say, when you were telling me, and I was like, this is not gonna translate well, and that sounds fucking dumb. And the execution from your edit and obviously phenomenal videography skills. Yeah, it worked. Like the execution was great. Yeah. Anyways, on to number two. <clears throat> so the HK SDMR. Mm. Okay. So yesterday, which is November 3rd, we released our video on gas gun versus bolt gun with Joe Dawson. Right. Right. Going into that footage or that bulk of uh, content with Joe, I was dead set on an AR-10 gas gun. I'm like, look, for 308, this fits all the needs that I want, 800 meters in. I don't think I want to go the bolt gun route. I think this fits me more, especially since I'm an AR-15 kind of guy. Sure. Right? And then after shooting that, even though Seekins makes a great gas gun, yeah. I was like, dude, I, they're too difficult. It's not drawn to it, yeah. I'm just not drawn to the idea that I thought once existed. Mm -hmm. That changed, and I said this in this SDMR video. The HK SDMR is the contract 308 gas gun. <clears throat> We had the chance with James Williamson to go review and shoot that gun along with HK. Yeah. Um, out there in North Carolina. Yep. It checked every box that I wanted an AR-10 gas gun to check. Extremely cool looking, which is always number one. Incredible aesthetic. Aesthetic is just. Incredible. And that adds, like, you know, definitely adds accuracy. Oh, 100%. I shot it better yeah. because of it. Yeah. Oh, your confidence goes yeah. up, right? Um, Recoil impulse is exactly how I thought an AR-10 gun should recoil. Yeah. Straight back, straight forward. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit more reciprocating mass, yeah, but I'm looking course. for that straight back, straight forward on a nice high-end AR. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The fact that you can beat the ever-living hell out of that gun, and it continues. It's a tank. The AR-15 controls, which we all know I'm a fan of. Yep. And again, just the history behind HK and what they do. That gas gun for a 308, it's, it's sad because we can't get them. Can't get it, but you can get close though. Like they've got the LRP pack. I know, and like, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I do. I don't fully understand it, but sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't uh, know that? No, 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 I do. It's oh, okay. just, I've never really pondered it philosophically, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, now it's not the same. And we had people who worked on that contract and that program there telling us about the gun, mm -hmm. just adds to it. Yeah. Now having said all that, it shoots great. It's very reliable. We had zero malfunctions. Um, in the shooting drill, which people will have seen by this time, I did win it, but that's because I'm good. But yeah. also that gun, I think, aids in me getting right. that W. Well, yeah. I shot it too, and I still have that footage of it as well. And I, I have fewer than 100 rounds at, at, at range like that, at distance, you know? True. And I, I hung out. a great point. I kept up. 
Like, yep. I think I hit 8 out of 10, and I think it was 54, because I just edited this not long ago. Uh -huh. I was within a 6 second range of you guys, and 8 out of 10. So I, I missed one more, but for my complete newbie at distance, like, dude, I can barely figure out how to find my fucking eye relief most of the time, sure. you know what I mean? So to, then to jump on something like that and actually hang out with the cool kids, like, it was just a really capable gun. That's a very interesting point. Mm. Huh. Yeah. Very much so. Great gun. So you think the gun just adds to the overall shootability for you? A little bit. Yeah. I think I learned I fast too. But. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Number one spot. Numero uno. Number one spot. And I feel, I'd be curious if folks have in the, you know, if anyone commented ahead of like, oh, I know what number one is. Because to me, it felt like a foregone conclusion, if I'm being honest. When, <laughs> it, when we started doing this, I was like, how could the number one spot not be my infinity? Like, how could that not be? It's it's a default. Right. It, 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 to me, I mean, it's such an incredible pistol. It does shoot better than any other pistol that I've got. And we're talking about, you know, fractional, you know, marginal points, because of sure, a Nighthawk BDS9, sure, a Cabot Insurrection, sure, yeah, sure, I got it. But we're talking small percentage points, but yeah, I do think it shoots better than any pistol that I've got. It's not comped, it's not ported, all that. So there's, one, there's the shootability, and you comment on that all the time. You're like, this is like the most shootable gun ever. Yeah, I don't know, <clears throat> that recoil impulse is, it's so overused, but it is straight back, straight forward into the palm, meaty palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. There's, I, I don't know how to quite explain it, man. Like, yeah. what you try to explain it to me, one, as we saw with Roger today. Yeah. He picked yeah. it up and shot it, and he's like, oh, I kind of get it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, you know, so you combine, to, to me, it's two things. You look at it and you go, okay, there's one, the overall quality of the product that you're getting in terms of how shootable it is, the quality, the fitment, tolerance, all, all that kind of stuff. But then you go, okay, well, on top of that, which is criteria number one, does it work and does it work well? Number two is, yeah, you can just make it any way that you want it. Like, we'll just custom make whatever you want. So if you factor on the, the performance side of it, then with the customization side of it, you're just like, I don't know, man, it's kind of hard to create another argument here. It, and, and also say to just, you know, selfishly, you know, video wise, I'm, you know, to me, I do love when people actually enjoy our, our work mm -hmm. and, and they watch something and they get behind it and they're like, hey, this was cool or whatever, because we, we put a lot of work into this stuff. And I mean, that Infinity, Infinity video, as niche as it is, the fact that it, it performed as well as it did, to me, I was like, cool. Because if I could pick a video that I want you guys to see and go, hey, this was a, a different gun tuber experience. It's yeah. like, hey, that's probably the best thing we've ever produced, in my opinion, because it really worked and it was not easy to make. Really not easy to make. Yeah, I had I had an injury I was dealing with, so I wasn't on that shoot. But when you guys got home that night, you're like, hey, you know, cats have nine lives. We might have used two today while filming. And then you explained what it took to get to that filming location. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. And, and then it might also, have been overhyping that, okay. but. Yeah. To say that it wasn't dicey in terms of av avalanche risk that we were sure. playing with that day, yeah. we were poking the beast a little bit. Yeah. That, and I will say, you know, we got the chance to go to Infinity mm -hmm. afterwards, <clears throat> and to have a manufacturer of that level that is that obsessed with perfection, obsessed, also say, hey, thank you for showcasing our product the way you did. Yeah. You did a good job, even though I wasn't there, not a part of it. It's again with all the hard work we put into this. It's really yeah. cool to see that. Yeah, and, and when it came out, I got a message from Infinity that day, and hmm. without saying the exact verbiage, they basically said, "Hey, that you know that that really meant a lot to us. Like, thank you." And, and again, we're not in the business of trying to please manufacturers, but also selfishly, what creative d doesn't want someone to, to say like, "Hey, we." You know, because our, our product was was the thing that you're talking about, and and that that meant something to us. I'm like, ah, oh, cool. I'm good. Yeah, you know, I'm good now. Yeah. Brandon was a very personable dude. He was just cool to hang out with. Like, he just felt like one of the dudes the whole time we were Absolutely. there, the whole weekend we were at Infinity. But another no, no. fun thing about that video is we do put like extra effort behind some of the bigger products that we feature on the channel. Yeah, there's definitely like the standard reviews, and then like, okay, this one's gonna like, blow, you know, yeah, be awesome. And usually the ones that we do put that extra oomph behind might not get the most views, but mm -hmm. it's definitely more of your creative outlet, our voice, and like we're gonna just see what we can do, right? Mm -hmm. The cool thing about Infinity is it was still one of the top viewed videos for us, but also one of those really creative long four minute intros, right? Yeah. And so it's cool to see something like that really work and yeah. no doubt. come together. Yeah. So that's number one spot. Now we take you 
on a strong right turn. To the dark side. <laughs> Shifting over to the dark side now. Mm -hmm. With the year, this is not like top five. Oh. There's no number one, but this is like the notably bad products of 2023. And there's three that stand out. But you know what there also is? What's that, Jake? What I like to call an honorable mention. Okay? What's I think I know where you're going mention? with this. Last Does it year, start with a C last and year, end with a Z? I made a promise last year. Okay. Okay. And I'm a man of my word. Last year I said, as long as the CZ Scorpion continues to exist, <laughs> it will make our worst year-end list. The CZ Scorpion still exists, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate it. I have one in the mail right now. Do you? No. I'm just oh, saying. thank God. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to get fired mid-video, dude. <laughs> Just for that comment. Yeah. It still exists, everyone. And there's a new gen of it. You know how much interest I have in it? Less than zero, sir. Jack shit worth of interest. <laughs> oh, um, aggressive. Yeah. So um, it it's like an honorary doctorate degree for the 1911 syndicate. The CZ Scorpion has earned its honorary doctorate of being terrible. And that said, we will give you the real list now. <laughs> so moving on to the list. Again, another gun you reviewed. Um, I had, I was insulted with this review though, so I'm gonna talk about you it. You partake okay. in a portion, uh, in, in a pre-production portion of it. <clears throat> that gun will be the Battle Arms Silent Professional. Mm. Okay, so this, I got roped into this review, even though Jake was doing it, in Utah and in Arizona, while you were doing the review, I met with Battle Arms because they were in town. Yeah, we won't say names or anything. But, just, but the comments I said battle made. arms. Oh, okay. yeah. Listen, guys. I'm not a smart man. Okay? But to be told by a manufacturer that it is the elevation at which you're shooting, mm -hmm. which is why the firearm is malfunctioning. Right. Look. Again, I'm not a smart man. I'm not a smart man, Gen A. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. Oh. But I did have my intelligence insulted with this one. Oh. We went through a list of all the things that you're struggling with. Yeah. And the answer was, well, you're shooting it at the wrong elevation. If that's so, going to be an argument, that should come with a disclaimer. Like, they shipped it to Utah. One, there's either two things that happen there. One, you think I am that stupid, which is probably the case. I mean, maybe. Two, you developed a gun that can only shoot at what? Sea level? <laughs> sea level, yeah. How does, that, how does that help us when we're in Vegas, which is far above sea level, and you know it was going to Utah, which it snows. Again, way above sea level. So I'm a little more salty probably than you on that one because yeah. I got directly insulted to my face. Sure. So I'm glad that made the list. I'm trying really hard not to go too hard it on made this, the list. but um, fuck that gun. Yeah, not Whoa. a great gun, not a great experience. <laughs> you definitely went hard in the paint. Um, <laughs> not, not a great experience. Um, Elevation. Which the funny thing is, <clears throat> again, in terms of from a manufacturer's perspective, Unfortunately for them, that video performed very well. Um, you know, that was <laughs> that was one of our first videos where it's like we really went hard on the whole tale of two brothers with five, five, six, and three hundred blackout, which to me still personally is probably one of my favorite it's intros awesome. we've done because it's actually <laughs> the punch right fly through the air. Come on, that's funny. Um, but I was like, oh, that video performed well, and it probably didn't do great things for them. Which again, I don't take I take no pride in saying bad things about a company. That's not the intent. That's I wish I did, life was only grand. But sometimes it ain't. It delivers you some freaking rotten tomatoes and you gotta yeah. call it. And I'm happy to say I'm not intelligent, but I am not that dumb. Yeah. Okay. okay. Next well, next one. Who's, no. who's Jenny and why'd your voice go all weird? <laughs> oh, he, boy, this is the problem of 20-something year olds right here. What, what's the problem? He doesn't know the reference. He doesn't know the movie reference. Oh, it's Are a you, movie. Do you not know oh, what that is? Christ. I was okay, no, 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 hear me out, hear me out. Not a smart man. I'm playing it up for the camera. Okay. But I probably can't name what movie it's from. <laughs> if I well, let, let me give you the biggest clue that I can give you and tell me if you now know it. Tom Hanks stars in it. What about this? I couldn't name another Tom Hanks movie. Oh yeah. That's what about terrifying. this line? What about this? But Lieutenant Dan, you ain't got no legs. If that doesn't I've seen the movie. I think I'm just drawing a blank because I'm camera shy. Okay, well, we're not going to tell you. We're going to leave you with a cliffhanger, and you can go figure it the fuck out. I'll leave it by the end of the video. Number two. 
<laughs> Everyone's tuned out of the video, but no one's even watching at this point. <laughs> My dad. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Thanks, Dad. Wayne. Thanks, Dwayne. Um, at the number two spot uh, is more of just a broad subject matter than a particular gun. So I'm just calling number the number two spot, if you will, 8.6 blackout. I'm not into it, okay? I'm not into it. Um, very tricky video for us to do, and I'm not gonna get into all the dynamics of it, but we had a lot of issues in terms of things running. <clears throat> it was never meant to be a gun review. That's not what it was meant to be. No. It was meant to be talking about the round and the relevance of the round, what's it gonna do, how does it perform, yada, yada, yada. Like, that was the point of the video. And so it wasn't a gear review, but the reality was, I mean, it was a lot of problems that, that be, what became so complicated was nothing was really working and it became almost impossible to pinpoint. So is this a gun issue? Is it a suppressor issue, an ammo issue? Like what's going on? Because nothing's really working in every, it was a round robin of every single person's pointing the blame at the other one. You seen going, the meme with Spider-Man pointing at each other? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was that. And I'm like, okay guys, so look, here's the deal. I'm just in the middle of it, okay? I'm just the bearer of the bad news here, which is nothing's really working. I don't know whose fault it is, but some of you have some issues here and no one would no one would claim it and be like, hey, hang on, I think we might have a QC issue or whatever it is. So it's like, look, not my thing, not my thing. I think the cost of it will prevent it from ever being any sort of popular thing outside of very niche circles of dudes that want to go shoot a Cape Buffalo in the face or something, which I could care less about. Just, okay, sure, great, good for you. Um, not my thing. Nope. Not my thing. Want nothing to do with that. Yeah. In any way, shape, or form. Now, the number one spot. And I would actually put this at number one. I wasn't really ranking these as more of a list. Yeah. But if I was gonna do a number one spot. Top three we, worst, this would be the worst of the worst. This would be the worst. It would be the best at being the worst. be the worst of the year. And again, I'll be curious if anyone in the comments has already connected the, uh, You're the, good, brother. the murder mystery yeah. here. Yeah, we're good, thank you. <gasps> Forrest Gump. Is that it? Did you have your phone out looking at it? I didn't have my phone out. There's camera, bro, I would get caught. I feel like there's okay, cheating. Okay, no, 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 here, here it is. Cheating. I knew the movie. And I just had to like work my way through my brain a little bit. And what came to me was Run, Forrest, Run, which is a meme. I don't know if I've seen the movie or not, but I was able to well, piece it together. Still hasn't that. seen the movie. It's a good movie. You should watch, <laughs> probably watch it. It's the number one spot. If anyone has guessed this, congratulations. For me with a silver bullet, it's the Terran Tactical Pit Viper. <laughs> and I would like to tell you why. Okay. Continue, Jake. Because oh, the saga has continued post video. Yes, it has. Which to me is important. Um, so here's why originally it would make the list. If I get a, let's say, let's go back to T sauce. Let's say I got a T sauce, some $400 1911, and it totally sucked. All right. $400 1911. Eh, whatever. If I get a $7,000 gun that is hyped up by pop culture, and Jamie Foxx tells me it's good, which I have no idea what that has to do with anything, but he did. He did oh. tell me that it's good. Is he like a firearms expert? He didn't know how to hold the pistol when he picked it up. Oh. His grip was corrected, but he's telling me it's good, which is supposed to clue me in that it's a good huh. pistol or something. I don't know. Um, but so if I get a $7,000 gun that's hyped up by pop culture and yada, 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 because it's the John Wick gun, cool. Um, and it still sucks. I have a fundamental problem with that because at what point are we simply milking our audience mm. and fan base for everything they're worth? Yeah. At, at what point do you call it like it is? Because here's what happened, guys. Here's the follow-up to the video. The, 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 the review speaks for itself. Like, really, I don't need to say much other than if you haven't seen the review, go watch the review. Here, here is the aftermath of it. So, video comes out. Gun was loaned to us by a buddy. I'll leave his name out of it. So was loaned to us by Buddy, who we actually went to dinner with last night. And- um, Great tacos. He, yes, great tacos. Um, in Dallas. <laughs> so, um, um, so he gets a call from Taryn after this, or not Taryn direct, uh, Taryn's customer service, whatever, someone right. from the office. And they say, hey, you know, we, we saw that your, you know, gun was in this recent video and, um, you know, basically they, they could see the serial number and figure out, well, who bought that serial number and, you know, look up his contact info, call him. No problem, I have no issue with that. Um, but they just said, hey, look, you know, we're, we're sorry about that. Looked like you had some issues. You know, we'd like to take your gun in and, and fix it. Okay, cool. One, I'm split on that. I go, I go, hey, good on you for reaching out because you didn't have to do that. So good, good on you for that. I have no issue there. Um, number, the, the flip side of that coin is, did you do that for the other customers or just the one that publicly had a gun that melted down? Okay, 
So I could probably guess what the answer is. Yeah, I don't know the answer. It's pure speculation. And I'm trying to stay away from speculation <clears throat> territory. Then I'll put my foot in my mouth. So I go, I don't know. Maybe they did that with everyone. But really what happened, and I'm, I'm speaking in, you, you, you know, basically what happened was, look, a bunch of orders come in. It's maybe more popular than we thought. We ran out of certain components. And so we improvised and we put on what we could find. And so the grip, mo the grip module that was on that gun was basically the backup. And, and I would also note that there was a, I'm blanking on his name, so apologies, but there was another gun tuber, you know, gun channel that actually put out a video after our video came out about a week later. And he was comparing the gun that I had to the one, I believe it was the Honest Outlaw had. I think it was the gun that he had. Could, could, be, right. could be wrong no, on I that, think don't right. quote me, but I think it was his gun. Regardless, right. it was the gun that we had and a gun that someone else had. Mm -hmm. and, and he was basically saying, well, this gun's good and it doesn't look anything like the bad gun and it's different grip modules and everything. So again, alluding to the fact of, so they basically just ran out of parts and slapped some bullshit on it and didn't fit it or anything. Like they just put some, put, put some shit on it. Now here's where the story again escalated. So Buddy sends the gun in, they still have the gun, he's heard nothing in regards to the gun being fixed or when it's coming back. They've just had his gun for, I think, I don't know, two, three months now. So you go, okay, that's a little tight right there. Um, but then, so another buddy of mine, again, leaving names out of it, he buys the Terran Tactical Shotgun, right, from John Wick 4, that, which is, again, I'm speaking a little out of term, but isn't this just a Genesis Arms shotgun? I don't understand why it's a Terran Tactical Shotgun. Isn't it just a it Genesis? Because it has his logo on the side, I Isn't think. it just a Genesis Shotgun? Though? I don't know. Like, again, someone correct me in the comments. I'm Please. Speak, I'm, I'm, you know, free flowing this, but, so he's on his first mag, and he takes the thumb safety off, and the thumb safety shears off. Here's where you're gonna laugh at this. So, so it freezes in a position where basically the gun's rendered completely useless. He can't even get the gun like on safe anymore. It's so, round chambered? I think, so he probably disassembles the gun, gets the round out, whatever. And so, you know what, I don't know if you know this. So it turns out, it's a battle arm safety. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah, I swear to God. Completely shears off and it was like a four piece safety design. We were like, why in the hell is a safety a three or four piece design? So that same buddy, he's got the shotgun. You buy it as a package. It's the gun that <laughs> comes with the optic and it comes with the suppressor, right? Because it's meant to be suppressed. So he bought that pre-Pit Viper video. He bought it at the time of filming this roughly six months ago. And he realized like two or three months ago, it's like, I never got that suppressor. And so he's been calling Taryn for over a month at this point and saying, hey, can I just get the thing that I paid for? They literally will not return his calls. He can't get a reply from him. He's calling him and it's like he can't get a reply to just get the thing that he paid for over six months ago at this point. That's an NFA item lost in the mail too. It doesn't that come No, I'm not saying it's lost in the mail. I don't think they ever sent it. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but, but again, it's like, look at, at what point do, do we just kind of call a spade a spade and go, hang on, this isn't right. This isn't right. You're charging premium prices for bullshit. Like at what point do you just call it? Yeah. I mean, isn't that the MO from day one though? With us? No, with Taryn Tactical. I don't know. I have nothing against Taryn on a personal level. I think he brings good things to the shooting community in terms of exposing people with influence to our Second Amendment community. I do think that there's value there in bringing a Jamie Foxx to your ranch or, or whatever it is and, and saying, hey, let's teach you about firearms for your upcoming movie. Cool, dude, I got no issue with that. But when you start putting your name on not good product that you're selling for premium tier pricing and not following through with your commitments, I have a problem with that. How can that not be the number one spot? No, you're right. It has Nailed to it. It, has to it, be. It, it seems that a lot of the audience agrees with you too, because you just made an Instagram post asking, well, what would you pay for the, the pit? Oh yeah. yeah. And it was like and over a hundred comments. 4,000, 3,500, 4,500, yeah. not a dollar more than 3,000. Yeah. No suggestion like, that it's worth anywhere close to what it is. Not a person would pay five grand for the thing. Right? No. And, and, and so, like, look, I ain't trying to be Debbie Downer here. You, you guys, I like to think part of what you tune into this channel for is an Honestly. honest assessment. Yeah. And, you know, on my end of it, it's like I try to do it as respectfully as I can, but sometimes, you know, the Irish Panther gets worked up and you just gotta, you gotta send it a little bit. And you just go, I'm not okay with that. Calling a spade a spade, nothing wrong with it, man. Yeah. So that's a, it's a, it's a, he did note to end the year on in this video, but also it's like, I don't know. I think it's part of what you guys tuned in for. Yeah. Well, and it's also deserved. So yeah. let's, now let's say this. Okay. As we wrap it up. Yeah. 
let's say that we're in here right now, mm -hmm. and someone comes in and they're they're threatening our lives. Yeah, it's me. I'm and I take your this. Life. Okay, cool. I take this fork, <laughs> right? To, you know what I'm saying? This one or this one? It doesn't both, matter. I'm gonna both. go both sides of the net. Yeah. Um, and it's legally justified because my life was threatened. This is a okay. legally justified tool. Like this is illegally. I legally own this fork, or I'm technically I'm kind of renting it since I'm here as a paying customer. Um, but what would I need? for this legally justified incident. I would hope and pray you had something called firearms legal protection. Mm. Now, even though you didn't use a firearms in this scenario, a firearm in this scenario, you used a legally justified self-defense tool. I did what I had to do. You're in a state where you can also legally justifiably defend yourself Very against much. a crispy attack. Right. 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 I'm so firearms you're ferocious. <laughs> firearms legal protection is the protection you would want. It mm -hmm. is concealed carry insurance, self-defense insurance. Our code 1911 will save you about a third off each package. Yeah. You got the single, unmarried, lonely guy package. Yeah. I got the traveling married man package. Yeah. He doesn't have anything. <laughs> I don't have a package. He doesn't own any guns, so. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure we'll it out. We'll figure that we'll out. We'll figure it out. But great thing about them, guys, when you call, you get an attorney, not a customer service rep. You have coverage in all 50 states, dependent on how your package works. There's consulting with your case, a bunch of perks that come with this. So if you guys are in need of concealed carry insurance, self-defense insurance, whatever you want to call it, you all as adults should have it. FLP or you guys. Yeah, code 1911. Appreciate it. And we will see you guys. You know, again, a quick final thought. This yeah. is the last thing that we're gonna say to these people in 2023. 20, yeah. So I mean, hell, without you guys watching this stuff, we're just a couple of assholes out of dinner talking yeah. to ourselves. Yeah, so thank you guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. We are the hell grateful for your support, all the kind words, even the negative stuff. We love you guys too, and we'll be praying for you. Yeah, we'll see you guys in the new year. Where's Crispy, you wanna say anything? I was just wondering where Devin is. My, my chocolate milk never came out.